Once you understand what health is really about, you can pretty much eat anything you want and indulge in a variety of foods and they're still considered healthy. People are afraid of calories, saturated fat, cholesterol, when in reality, they should be afraid of the agrochemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, the fungicides, all the crap, the fluoride, the chlorine that they're putting in our food supply. Regardless of what you're cooking, when you go high quality, when you go organic, when you prepare things properly, if they need to be fermented or sprouted, whatever it may be, the food is considered healthy. You know, we've done cheesecake on this channel, bread, creme brulee, the most indulgent food that the average person thinks, oh, it's too high in calories, it's bad for you, it's gonna raise your cholesterol. No, that's not the case. And today, we're making french fries. I've seen so many recipes where they're using regular potatoes, you know, they're not using a high quality filtered water, they're not using organic products for the various things they're putting on the potatoes, especially the fat choice, they use vegetable seed oils. And there's downsides to all of those things. So with a slight increase in budget and a little more effort in understanding nutrition, we can make super healthy french fries let me show you guys how. In order to get the crispiest potato possible, first we have to boil it in hot water. That requires, of course, water, and most people just pour this straight out of the tap. I actually have a reverse osmosis filtration system on my sink, and when we make bone broth on Frankie syringe meat, we actually just buy a couple of cases of bottled water. You know, the water you're cooking with is just as important as the water that's going into your body. You know, so you have three options. You can you know, filter it with a reverse osmosis system, you can use glass bottled mineral water, or you can find a local well or a spring and get high quality water from there. Again, it's about removing the negatives, the agrochemicals, the endocrine inhibitors, the antibiotics, all of the negative stuff that's going in our food supply. And for the potatoes, all we really have to do is go organic. That's removing a large amount of the chemicals they're allowed to spray on the crops. Of course, it's not perfect. Like if you could grow potatoes in your backyard or get them from a local farmer, that would be better. But organic, Russet potatoes, red potatoes from you know a local market is a great affordable choice, great carbohydrate source, and you could probably even get them cheaper in bulk if you wanted to. Uh, for the cooking oil, I'm using organic liquid coconut oil. Uh, you could use refined coconut oil. I just want something that's neutral, high in saturated fat, is not as prone to oxidation as these vegetable seed oils, olive oil, that do have omega-6, that do have polyunsaturated fat, that not only oxidize, but they're dangerous for our health. They're one of the most inflammatory things we can consume. Uh, if I had some tallow from Frankie's Here Range Meat, especially the Wagyu beef tallow we have, I would probably use that instead. Uh, you could also use ghee, clarified butter. That would be great here. And uh, even you know pork lard or any type of animal fat would work well here. But keep in mind, if you do use those fats, the potatoes would taste like that. And the Wagyu fat might be really, really good, but something like you know, chicken fat or ghee or, or lard might be a little bit overpowering. So for the boiling water, when we blanch the potatoes, uh, we put a little vinegar in there. That prevents the potatoes from falling apart. I just have an organic uh, apple cider vinegar. You can use any type of organic vinegar. And for the salt, I'm just using a Mediterranean sea salt. The main thing to keep in mind with salt is you just don't want the regular chemical process table salt that's you know, full of negative things. And it's super, super salty and doesn't even have, you know, a high enough sodium chloride content to, to give your body the electrolytes it needs. Uh, for equipment, we need to cut the potatoes into french fries, so we have the knife and the cutting board. Uh, we need to boil it in the pot with water. And then I have two baking trays uh, that we're going to put in the oven later with the coconut oil after we blanch the potatoes. So while I cut these potatoes, I'm gonna get this water boiling and I'm gonna turn my oven on 500 degrees. Not really necessary that you have to peel them, although I like doing it. We definitely have to make sure to cut them into small enough sizes so they crisp up easily. Some of you guys might be wondering about potatoes from an anti-nutrient perspective, uh, but it's not that much of a concern. Some people might be incredibly sensitive, but once you boil these and salt them and bake them in the oven, it's really just a starch source to feed our gut bacteria. Now we want these pretty thin, because the thinner they are, the easier the heat in the oven will caramelize the outside surface. So I'm gonna cut the potato four times lengthwise. Now I'm gonna stack each half on top of each other and cut 
some french fries like that. So once in half, and then I'll take the half and I'll cut it again vertically, put it on top of itself, and maybe do three cuts on that side. And again, if you didn't peel these and you know you cut them pretty big, now this would be a much faster process. You know, instead of spending 10, 15 minutes cutting potatoes every time you want french fries, probably be more of a, a three or four minute ordeal. So we got our potatoes all nice and sliced up into you know fairly small fries, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna put about a handful of salt into the water. And we're gonna put about a tablespoon of vinegar. And we're just gonna bring this to a boil. Mortar's at a rolling boil. I'm gonna put the potatoes in and set a timer for eight minutes. So it's been closer to 10 minutes. We're gonna take these off and drain them. So I'm gonna let these just sit and dry off for a minute or two, and then we'll throw them in the oven. You don't have to dry these off. You don't have to let them sit. You know, you can just shake them real quick right after they boiled, and then we can throw some fat on them. So what I like to do is put it in a bowl, Pour you know a couple tablespoons of the fat on top of the fries, and then some more salt. I'll mix the oil in, and I'll like try to look in the bottom of the bowl to see how much oil there is. And since there isn't a lot of oil in the bottom of the bowl, I'll put more oil on top of the fries. A couple more tablespoons of oil, and these fries are you know boiled for 10 minutes. So try to be a little delicate when tossing them. I know I said cutting the fries was the only time consuming part, but I lied. Uh, we also have to space them out fairly methodically onto the trays. You know, there doesn't exactly have to be a lot of space between these fries, but they can't be touching. So that's one tray, tray number two done. I do have a bit extra here. You can throw these in the fridge and then just cook them in the oven whenever you'd like. So with the oven on 500, I'm gonna put both of these in the top rack, and this is gonna take anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. The real question here is if you're super duper crazy, what you can do is after about 25, 30 minutes, when the bottom is browned on the pan, because you know the pan is where the heat is being held. So the bottom of these fries is gonna crisp up, whereas the top just might get a little bit golden. You can flip them over 25, 30 minutes in and then get the other side crispy, but that's a lot of work. You gotta go in there with tongs and flip over each of these fries individually one by one. It's not really worth it, and the end product isn't that much better. That being said, if I was cooking for like a really nice occasion or in a restaurant, if someone was paying me to cook, I would probably do that. But honestly, if you're gonna go that far to flip the fries and get you know deep brown crust in the oven, <laughs> at that point, I would have just bought a deep fryer and done it that way. So it's been about half an hour. Uh, we could actually take these out right now. I mean, you can crisp these up a little more, but uh, some of them are going to start to burn. So right out of the oven, I'm going to hit these with some more salt. And if you guys look on the underside, it's a lot browner. So that's what I mean by, you know, you can flip these all over, put them back in the oven for a bit longer, get the bottom side crispy, but it doesn't really add that much for the flavor. It's more for the appearance. Uh, so we'll give these a few minutes to cool off, and then we'll taste them. So we have our lovely taste tester, Gina. Oh, oh we're not gonna... You can try it, Gina. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have kids, or you want to have some ketchup with the french fries, I just grab whatever mm, organic awesome. ketchup is on sale at Whole Foods. And you can make your own ketchup, but it's, you know, it's a pain. A lot of ingredients. Mmm. You guys hear the crunch? These are very, very, very crispy. And in, in the crispiness of these is a bit of an understatement. Mm-hmm. These are actually crispier than most french fries you're going to get in the deep fryer. And they're hotter too. Look how golden they are. You can also eat these for breakfast too if you want the extra carbs. Yeah, I mean if you have these left over at night from your meal, you could just chop them up, throw them up with some eggs. But uh, this is great if you guys are eating a lot of potatoes for some type of bodybuilding diet, <clears throat> if you have some kids, if you want to make a treat once in a while. And uh, mm. it's definitely tastier than just, you know, some boiled potatoes, baked potatoes, or mashed up. Although it does require a little more effort. 
Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, let me know how you like this. If you guys are looking for more healthy recipes that aren't necessarily specific to the carnivore diet, we do have a few on the channel. If you guys go back some months, we even have like a sourdough bread video recipe from last year. So uh, if you guys do want to support me, we have you know Frankie's syringe meat down in the description where I mentioned the Wagyu tallow earlier. We have Frankie's Naturals for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Organ supplements for, uh, we have the full spectrum organs and beef liver available. I am working on getting you guys some more glandular powders. Mm. And uh, you guys can go to frank com, check out my book. And uh, I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff I could tell you guys, but uh, we'll leave it at that for now. So mm. thanks again for joining me. I'll see you guys Bye. for tomorrow's live stream as well as video. We're going to do some vegan critiques.